Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Florida. And today our question comes to us from Claudia Blanton. And Claudia has a follow-up question to yesterday's vlog about creating thought forms or golems. And Claudia's question is, can a child accidentally create such a thought form in a moment of stress, for example? And if one were to do this, if a child were to accidentally create an artificial guardian of this kind, and it later proved limiting to their spiritual growth, how could they then, as an adult, liberate themselves from their connection to it? And my answer to this is yes, I think it's entirely possible that a child could accidentally create such a golem. And I think it's probably more common than people give it credit for, although also, when people have what are commonly called imaginary friends, I think sometimes they're spirits of ancestors, sometimes they're spirit guides, sometimes they're local spirits, but sometimes they are thought forms that the child has themselves created. And I think that particularly a child who is in fear or under great stress certainly could, in theory, do this. Now, it is much more likely that such a thing could happen if, in previous incarnations, the soul that is now this child had learned this technique or otherwise studied serious magic because we carry these things forward from one life to the next. And what we work very hard to learn in one life may seem to come to us very naturally in the next because we've carried forward the knowledge even though we have to reopen it. So yes, if the child had already gained this skill in a past life, they could certainly unconsciously employ it and create their own golem to be their guardian. And if this was later limiting to them, well, then what would they do? Well, the problem with creating this kind of thought form accidentally is you haven't really set any parameters, which can make it much harder to dissipate it when you no longer desire it. And it is important to bear in mind that once you've created this thought form, it really is its own separate energy. And when it is eventually dissipated, that energy will go forward into other existences, or at least that's my belief. What I would recommend, not knowing any more about the situation, because I'm assuming that this is not just a hypothetical question, but I would say that the first thing the person should probably do is cut the psychic cords that bind them to the thought form. And they should talk to the thought form and thank it for its service. Be very kind, be very thankful for what's been given to you, by the efforts of this thought form, and then ask it go, to go on to its next incarnation. Ask it to dissipate its energy, and you can then help to ground that energy and allow it to go forward into its next incarnation. And this would be what I would suggest for liberating oneself from it. Now, it's very important to bear in mind that the person also has to actually want to do this. And if the person has lived many, many years with such a thought form, it may be very hard to release it. And that isn't necessarily because of any aspect of the thought form, but rather of the practitioner. Or in this case, I guess we should say the person because they're not consciously practicing. But these were the things that I would suggest. Again, it's very important to treat the thought form well. It has only been there doing service for the person. Even if that service eventually has become limiting, they should be thankful they should treat it as they would any other spirit, and they should release it. And at that point, they should ask it to ground its energy. Now, normally when you create a thought form, you set the parameters for the end of its existence. But when you've done it accidentally, you haven't done that. And that might make it a little bit more difficult, but this is still the way I'd pursue it. And I would say to try these things first, and if they're not sufficient to solve the situation, well, contact me again, and I'll see what else I can recommend. However, again, the main problem is not, in my opinion, going to be the releasing of the thought form, because I think that on its end, it will be willing to move forward when asked by the person who created it. The problem is the person being able to release it, because they will have shaped themselves to it as much as it has shaped itself to them. So, those are my thoughts on the matter. I hope that they are helpful. Again, if they do not completely solve the issue, contact me again and we'll see what else we can come up with. But that would be my opinion and I hope it helps. And until next time, may you blessed be. Today's vlog is brought to us by the term energy constructs. Energy constructs. Energy 
is the basic substance from which the universe is made. It responds to thought and emotion, which give it shape and form. In magic, we often use thought and emotion to shape the energy into useful forms, such as the quarter towers. The resulting creation, a ball of white light for example, is called an energy construct. Energy constructs have many uses. The magic circle, for example, by containing energy intensifies it. Most commonly, energy constructs are used as batteries, that is, to add extra energy to our workings.